Hi friends so now i am back with my next video and in this video we are going to talk about two important experiments about protein folding and finson experiment and lewenthal paradox so we'll talk about how they <clears throat> the what the theories that they had about the protein folding and how they proved it so please make sure to like share and subscribe my video so in my last video we have already talked about protein which are chains of amino acids and they acquire their function by folding into a proper 3d structure like from unfolded to native structure by going from primary structure to secondary structure tertiary structure and then forming the quaternary structure so here you can see a chain of polypeptide which folds into a 3d structure which has a functional role so i have already talked about the different models which are proposed to how this achieved and different protein structure we have already talked about in my previous video so if you want to know something about that please make sure to watch that video and there are different forces that are involved in protein folding such as hydrophobic effect electrostatic interaction disulfide linkage as well so when we talk about protein folding so there are different problems we we still don't know the solution of them how the protein code decides the structure of the protein the structure prediction because we still don't know whether it's random pred like when whether it's random the folding of the protein or there is some information the structural information that the that the protein provides for the folding and how does it achieve like what is the folding speed and mechanism because we know there are different proteins which help in the protein folding but still we don't know the exact mechanism of protein folding so enfinson uses this enzyme ribonuclease a to prove some of the some expect of the protein folding so just to tell you what is ribonuclease a it's an enzyme as you can see the structure of this enzyme and all these things that you see in this yellow circle are the disulfide bond which is formed by the so you can see the reduce form the thiol group to thiol group and when they oxidize like the oxidized form is what is known as a disulfide linkage so here you can see the disulfide linkage of the protein in the protein and this this disulfide linkage is important to connect two proteins uh, like to to fold two proteins or to like bring two amino acid together so and it is formed by two cysteine and here you can see one cysteine comes the other cysteine comes and they remove the hydrogen group and undergo oxidation and form the disulfide bond so here you can see the different numbers where the disulfide linkage are present and when they oxidize to form the disulfide linkage so what anfinson did is he denatured this ribonuclease a by adding the 8 milli 8 molar urea and which contains beta mercaptoethanol so what does beta mercaptoethanol does it it cleaves it it cleaves the disulfide linkage that was present between the cysteine groups and now when it reduces an 8 millimolar urea so urea basically interacts with the polar region of proteins resulting in the unfolding of the tertiary and primary stru uh, secondary structure of protein an exposure of the hydrophobic core so when he treated this native ribonuclease with this urea and mercaptoethanol what we get is a denatured reduced ribonuclease which is not functional it has no activity but what was important was and surprising was when he removed the urea and beta mercaptoethanol and allow the formation of the disulfide bond what he observed that the disulfide linkage always form between the same same amino acid so here you can see 2684 and here before also it was 2684 so how does the the structure the protein amino acid knows that it has to form the disulfide linkage like in this case 84 has to form the disulfide linkage only with 26 but not with 72 as you can see the renatured protein because we have eight eight cell uh, it uh, sulfhydryl group so it can makes with any of the 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 sulfide group bond with any of the sulfhydryl group and if you think of the conformation there are 105 phase 105 phase to renature this protein 
but still the protein always comes only in the one state which is this one so from this he concluded that all the information which is required for the folding is present in its native structure because here we did not put anything we did not put any protein for folding we just either denatured it and then allowed it to renature it back and it always goes through the same conformation so from this he concluded that the information necessary for folding is in the sequence itself uh, is in the amino acid sequence of the protein so now we talk about the leventhal paradox so leventhal paradox he he started with the hypothesis that when a newly synthesized polypeptide is synthesized it can assume higher number of conformation it can have so many conformation so imagine a 100 residue protein so it has 99 peptide bonds which means that it has so many phi and psi angles so if you think of the stable conformation stable conformation is the conformation with lowest energy and maximize stability it can assume so many conformation like it can assume hundreds and thousands of conformation like 3 into 198 different conformation and suppose if each possible conformation is sampled in we are talking about 10 to the minus 3 seconds which cannot even we count it will still take 1077 years to sample all possible conformation but the protein when it's folding it takes only few second or up to a minute for completion of process how is that possible that 1077 years it just take only few seconds or up to a minutes for completion of process so what he this what he concluded from this is the protein folding cannot be completely random an error process it's not like the protein folds and then it realizes ah oh, no this conformation is not stable we need to go to the another conformation so it's not completely random and there an error process there must be something else there must be some mechanism there must be some information there must be some shortcuts available for this protein folding so this was the leventhal paradox which was pointed by cyrus leventhal and this is why it's called the paradox because we are talking about the paradox that it should take 1077 years but still it takes only few second or up to a minute for completion of the process so i hope this is too are very important in case of protein folding and i hope it's clear if you have any doubts please let me know in the comment section and please make sure to like share and subscribe my channel thank you